You entered the national American awareness, the, the, the zeitgeist, if you would, at a time of, of liberation, right. of African-American liberation, of women's liberation. Right. And right. so on the screen, you became our, our surrogate. You did the things we fantasize about doing. You stood up for, for women in a way that we want women to stand for themselves. And what we'll talk about today, if we could, is the kind of breakthroughs you'd made on the screen in those days. It seems today a lot of people owe you debts, but in, in real day, everyday life now, women are under assault. The, the pushback, the violence, you know. So I'm as curious as, as a person who's lived it, who have opened doors for, for a new conception of, of what women can and should do, what do you make of this rollback, this kind of assault against women? Um, I usually look at the source, consider the source of women who have been raised, and I think it's a new wave, a new generation that wasn't my generation. My generation in the 70s, I was a child of the women's liberation movement that was beginning with Gloria Steinem, Rosa Parks, Bella Abzug. You were on the cover of actually Ms. Magazine. Yes. And Gloria Steinem talks yes. about how you were yes. th that icon. She reached out to you for that right. very reason. And for that reason. And my mom was Coffee, the story's based on, and Foxy Brown was my aunt. And these were women who were, were liberating themselves. It was a huge, not just an American, movement, but it was global. Mm -hmm. And because when we, we uh, lived in Europe, my mom, I'd come home and she and some of the neighborhood women would be sitting and talking about their discourse was being free and educated and having a job and taking their husband, you know, when he came home from war with our, without limbs, they could support the family and keep the home and not castrate the husband. So it was global, it was a global movement. And I was a child of that. And I saw what women had gone through. And when we had the, the, the embargo in 74, and uh, Vietnam men were coming home in caskets, there were a lot of women that were struggling to keep those homes. And they had to get an education or use their education. And, and literally, and my grandfather was the first feminist in my life that shot, he, he wanted all the girls to be self-sufficient. So he taught me how to hunt and fish and shoot. <laughs> and that stayed with me. And then when I was in junior high school and I was studying philosophy, Plato said women should be leaders. And he was challenged by his student, Aristotle. And he couldn't win because the women were saying, yes, yes, we can be. And that stayed with me. 